Hi and welcome to a new episode of The Opening School. Last week we finished off analyzing the dragon, but we are not to leave it entirely. This is so since we today are to analyze the Marochi Bind. Even though the name has nothing in common with the dragon, the openings are closely related. The game begins with the usual e4, c5 and knight to f3, but here black changes course from the typical dragon d6 by instead playing knight to c6. d4 is now played and after the exchange and the same square, black plays g6. Now you can surely see the similarities with the dragon. The game does now continue on with bishop to e3 and bishop to g7. In a normal dragon, black would now have, have placed his knight on f6, which would threaten the pawn on e4, forcing white to play knight to c3. But since this isn't the case, white is here able to play c4, taking over the center. This move is not overpowering, it simply allows more possibilities for white. If white would have continued on with a normal development, nothing would really have happened, unless white would have done a mistake, of course, which is fairly simple to make. Let us assume that instead of playing c4, white would have played knight to c3. The difference here from a normal dragon is the fact that black hasn't played d6, meaning that he can advance with his d5 pawn without, without temple loss. This means that white has to develop bishop, his bishop to c3 in order to avoid d5 in the d5 advancement. Well, this is done after knight to f6 and bishop to c4, and now white avoids the first threat. But there are more to come. Black does here continue with castle kingside. If white would be oblivious to the danger and continue on no normally by playing f3, he would enter another of those traps. Well, this isn't really a trap, because white can come out of it unscathed, but it's terribly uncomfortable. Black answers by playing queen to b6, and white retreats with his bishop to protect the pawn on b2. Black takes on e4 with the knight, and if white would recapture, black would now be able to capture on d4, and thus recapturing his lost piece, and after all the exchanges, he would be a pawn up. If white wants to save himself, he is to place his knight on d5 after the capture on e4. Black is now unable to capture on d4 since white's latest move threatened the queen. Black can't just leave his knight on e4, so he checks by playing queen to a5. Now follows c3 and knight to c5. One might think that black managed to win the pawn, but this is not the case since white now can win the e7 pawn after an exchange on c6, then to take on e7 with a check. After black plays king to h8, white takes the bishop on c8, and after the recapture, white castles, and the position is full of possibilities. Well, let us now go back to our c4. The game does from here continue on with casual development, this by black who is here playing knight to f6, and white continues on with knight to c3, protecting the pawn on e4. White does here have a very scary position. He is covering the entire center, and black is a little offer in that aspect. But of course this won't be so long. Well actually, it will take some time before there will be any obvious change in the center, but white's overwhelming force there won't give him much of an advantage. But with that I will have to thank for me and put an end to this week's episode of the opening scope. Next week we'll of course finish the analyzing of this opening, so see you then.